Hi there, my name is Etro with Mind Studios, and in this video, which is an add-on to our video on setting up delay and rollback network code in UFE, we're going to talk about handling and debugging online desyncs with our replay tool, and how to use game state logs that can be useful even if your game doesn't support online play. So if you haven't seen that first video on online play, go watch it or this video will be useless to you. It's also worth noting that rollback netcode and these desync tools are available in the pro version of UFE or above. So since today's video is all about how to handle desyncs, let's start by talking about what a desync even is first. For a bit of background, let's talk about how fighting games communicate with each other. Let's say we have two instances of the dev brawl game here running, and I make Jeff perform a light punch. The information that is sent to the opponent isn't a download of the light punch animation, the light punch move file, the active frames, hitboxes, and damage amount. No, 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 that's way too much data to transmit quickly. Instead, both instances run the full game and just send the button presses to each other. So for example, when I press the light punch button on one instance of the game here, the other instance will receive that and execute that as if a player had just pressed the light punch button locally. This is usually fine. However, let's say both games are slightly different. Let's say, for example, you don't have any code handling online character unlocks, and one instance of the game has a character that isn't unlocked for the other player. Well, since all the game is sending over as inputs, if the player one moves down to the bottom right and presses select, then one instance of the game will have player 1 set to Jeff, and the other instance of the game will have player 1 set to Buff Buddy. The result is that both players could end up playing entirely different games if one instance of the game is slightly different from the other. Since both instances of the game are no longer in sync, this is what's called a desync. Now you might just say, I'll avoid desyncs by making sure my players always have the same version of the game. And that will work most times, but you have to acknowledge that sometimes, because of some internet problems, a game instance may miss an input, or a hardware bug could make one instance of the game produce bad commands or data for a frame. Even the basis of rollback is based on some slight, unavoidable desyncs between game instances. So we can't just run some code that says if any desync is detected, just end the match. So as developers, we want to allow the slight, inevitable desyncs but avoid any desync that could actually mess up a match. So what UFE does is every frame, it sends some basic data to the other instance of the UFE game, like how much health each character has, how far away the characters are from each other, and more. To modify these sync checks, we can actually go to the heart and soul of our project, global settings, scroll on down to the bottom of network options, and then you'll see the synchronization test section. Here we can see how many times UFE sends and reads the sync checks, and we can print those specific sync checks to the console. When UFE gets mismatched data from a sync check, it compares that mismatched data to the float desync threshold right here. If this number is low or at zero, any slight desync will cause the games to disconnect, but having this number higher will make UFE a bit more merciful towards desyncs. I'm going to put mine around 0.03. Now after talking about what desyncs are and how UFE responds to them, let's make our own artificial desync to show you the desync system in action. So again, remember, a desync is when two online instances of the game start having different things happen on each screen. So I'll build my first instance of the game here. Now before I run the editor version of the game, I'm going to go to Jeff and open his character file. I could edit many simple things and make this work, but for this example, I'm going to go to Moves, Move File, Active Frames, Force Options, and increase the applied force of the light punch and run the game. Now when I punch, the game immediately catches that the player was too desynced for the match to sensibly continue and disconnects from the match. This is what will hopefully happen for your players, but as a developer testing your game, you probably don't want a crash screen. You want to know what happened. We can actually use the replay tool for that. So I'm going to set Jeff's move back to its original force and go back to the synchronization test section. So up here, instead of disconnecting when the match gets out of sync, we can actually activate the playback tool when the game gets out of sync. 
The final four settings in this section all change settings on this playback tool. Checking record post rollback frames records a match that corrects the replay to how the game should have played. Generate variable log creates a game state log right when the disconnect happens. Exported file path sends the log to a specific folder. And recording buffer is how many frames the recording tool will record leading up to the disconnect. In this case, at 360 frames and 60 frames a second, when a disconnect happens, we should be able to look back in time 5 seconds. Let's trigger another artificial desync to see this in action. Again, I'll build a normal version, modify the applied force in the editor version, and connect both instances to an online match. And ta-da! When the desync happens, our wonderful little replay tool pops right up. If you need more information about how to use this tool, we have a whole video about that in the top right. But with this, I can replay what happened in each instance of the game, and visually, just by scrolling, I can see the impact of the punch was much greater in the editor version of the game than in the built version of the game. In both, I have an editor message that says synchronization lost, but I can see much more information if we check out the logs that were mentioned earlier. For the engine version, I can find the log that was sent at disconnect right in the assets folder, right here under variable log. I'm going to open it in Explorer and then open it because I want to open this up in Notepad++, which we downloaded in part 7 of the series. Here, I can see thousands of lines of game state data that tell us the exact state of the UFE game on the frame when the disconnect happened. I can see different position variables, I can see the camera state, character states, and more. We can also go to wherever we built the game and open up that folder and go to data to find the other log. This much information isn't really too useful on its own. For most desyncs, we want to compare the logs in both versions of the game and see what's off about them. And in Notepad++, we can do just that. In Notepad++, we can go to Plugins, Plugins Admin, and then search for a plugin called Compare. Click it, click Install, and after a restart, you should get a plugin called Compare. And all you have to do is click this Compare button when you have both your files open, and then we've got side to side every difference highlighted in yellow right here. There will be a lot of differences, and most of these, like the camera state being in a slightly different position, will be false positives and not what's causing your problem. And most of these are off by like a tenth of a decimal or a hundredth of a decimal. And if you start scrolling down, usually you'll find something that has a higher difference value than tenth of a decimal place. So I'll kind of scroll through here. Position of different characters. Normalize difference. And right here, active forces, we see 20 on the left, and we see 0 on the right. So that's a pretty significant difference, and from there we can start our debugging. Another feature is we can scroll through the recording and generate a log on a very specific frame. So let's say I want to get frame 1000 for both of these, well, I guess I'll go 1100, and I can click generate log. And the old log file will be overwritten. So we've got to go find those and then reopen them. If it doesn't update, sometimes you have to delete the old log and press the generate new log button again. That's all for logs. For some general notes on desyncing though, just check the standard Unity debug log first, and it will sometimes tell you exactly what your desync issue is there. And also, make sure characters with rollback all use their animation maps, because that can be a false positive for desyncs. And with that, that should be all for our game. All we need to do is build and export our project, and we will complete our journey. See you there. Bye.